Hello, this is Dale Carson, criminal defense attorney, Jacksonville, Florida, author of the book Arrest Proof Yourself, and managing lawyer at www.dalecarsonlaw.com. I want to talk to you about probable cause. We talked earlier about reasonable suspicion, and that's a gut feeling that a police officer or you might have that something's not right, something's wrong. But probable cause is more than that. It is actually facts or circumstances that would lead a reasonable person, particularly a police officer here, to believe that a criminal act is about to occur, has occurred, or is in the process of occurring. But it's much easier to describe than it is to define. So the officer is patrolling a certain area and he sees that someone behind a set of apartments is using a crowbar to force open a back window. What is that? Is it reasonable suspicion? Well, yeah, it's reasonable suspicion because something different or odd is going on, but it's more than that. It's actually probable cause to believe that someone's committing a burglary. And with that probable cause, he can affect an arrest. Let's take another example. Let's say he sees two people fighting, and in a moment there's an explosion, a gun goes off, one of the individuals lays down on the ground, the other one flees holding a handgun. What is that? Well, it's both reasonable suspicion, but it reaches the level of being probable cause, and it's probable cause for aggravated battery or perhaps even murder. So that is what probable cause is, but it's not a gut feeling. It's something you can actually write down, which typically goes in the arrest affidavit, where the officer writes down what he observed someone doing, or in the case of a felony, a witness has explained to him what transpired, and that is what is used as a basis for an actual arrest probable cause.